Hey everybody, this is Nojo from Thranda Design. Today, let's take a look at the Beaver's fuel system. Uh, we'll look at how it's set up and also how to use it a bit. So, the Beaver has three primary internal fuel tanks located in the fuselage, down here underneath the floorboards. And it's divided into three tanks. We've got the front tank, the middle tank, or the center tank, it's, it's called both, and, and the rear tank back here. Uh, in the real plane, the three filler nozzles for those are located behind this access door, which is really cool. It makes it easy to access uh, when you're moored at the dock. You can just open it and fill all three tanks right there without having to, to move the plane around. Now, these tanks are also depicted in the pop-up. So if we bring our pop-up up, <laughs> we pop it up, we go to weight and balance here, and we can see these tanks right here. So front, middle, and rear. And the quantities on these, the front has 35 gallons, middle has 35 gallons, and the rear has 25 US gallons. So at a normal cruise of about 20 to 25 gallons per hour, that's kind of our normal cruise fuel burn, that's about one and a half, one and a half, and one hour for a total flight time of around four hours or so. Now if we pop into the cockpit here, whoop, then uh, we have the fuel selector. This chooses which tank feeds the engine. Uh, so right now it's set to rear, we also have center, and we also have the front tank, and then down, down for off. Uh, and then down here on the center console, we have the fuel gauges, front tank, rear tank, middle tank. And we can see they're kind of bouncing around because of the, the G forces on the plane. So sometimes in, especially in turbulent conditions, you might have to just sort of take the average of where the needle's pointing, uh, but you can do your best in that case. Now, there's an important note here. If we go back to, let's go back to the fuel selector. It goes front, center, rear, and let's look at the fuel gauges. Front, rear, middle. So, two things. One, middle and center mean the same thing. They're just called different things because the beaver's classic. And the other thing is the position of the rear and middle tanks is swapped on the gauge versus on the selector. In other words, on the selector it goes front on the left, center on top, rear on the right. But on the gauge it goes front on the left, rear on the top, middle or center on the right. So this just means you're gonna have to be really careful to make sure you're looking at the correct fuel tank when you're trying to switch tanks to determine where you have fuel. Uh, and here we have the front and middle both are 35 gallons and then 25 gallons up on top. We can also use the pop-up to set the fuel levels. So if I hover the mouse over the front tank here and I use the scroll wheel, I can scroll down to decrease and scroll up to increase. And same with the middle and the rear. And also a left click simply sets that tank to full. That's an easy way to refuel. Normally we'd start flight on the rear tank because then as we burn, it moves the center of gravity progressively forward. Um, but in some cases, especially if you're using the amphibian, like this, the uh, amphibian version, those floats are really heavy, and so your center of gravity is already pretty far forward. So for the amphib and the floats version, you might want to actually start on the front tank, because as you burn it, that'll move your CG aft to be more favorable. And then finally, the last two parts of the primary fuel system are the wobble pump down here, which affects fuel pressure, and the primer down here at the base of the door which is used to prime the engine. Both of those are covered in more detail in the engine starting tutorial, so I won't cover those here. So now that we've looked at the primary fuel system, let's take a look at the secondary fuel system. So if 95 US gallons wasn't enough, the Beaver also has optional wingtip tanks. And so these are located way out at the end of the wing. You can see the fuel filler cap here. Each wingtip tank contains 21.5 US gallons each for a total of 43 US gallons. That gives you an additional about 1.7 hours of flight time. These are also located on the pop-up here on the edges. And just like with the other tanks, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to fill them and a left click will just immediately fill them completely full. The selector for these is located up above the pilot's left shoulder. It has four positions, off, left, both, and right. And this selects which of the tanks is going to gravity feed into the front tank. I'll say that again, the, the wingtip tanks gravity feed into this front tank. If we look down at the gauge, this front tank. Um, in case of an imbalance, 
you can set left or right, but generally you just set it to both and they'll both gravity feed down into the, the front tank. Now, two kind of caveats here. The tip tanks have no fuel gauge associated with them. So the only fuel gauge we have is this front one. And there's also no overfill protection. So that means if our front tank was full like it is now, and our tip tanks have fuel in them like they do now, uh, let's go ahead, let's pull this up and let's turn this selector to both. So right now, if we look on the, the pop-up, we can see those tip tanks are actually slowly starting to drain, but the fuel tank's already full, so it's just overflowing. And if we go to the outside view, we can see, we can see the minor ecological disaster we're causing here. We're just pouring fuel uh, out of our fuel vent. So we're losing that fuel overboard. That's not great. Uh, if the front tank was not full, I'm just gonna scroll that down, we see it stops overflowing. And as soon as the front tank becomes full, it begins to overflow. So, there's a specific, uh, let's, let's turn that off, save the fish. Uh, so there's a specific procedure we need to follow in order to use these tanks. And it, there's more detail in the manual, so I'm going to leave the detailed description to the manual. You can read that on your own. But in general, the short answer is we're going to fly along for about one hour until the front tank is burned down to around 10 gallons. Right, because 35 gallons minus 25 gallons is 10 gallons, 25 gallons per hour, et cetera, et cetera. So you burn this down till there's 10 gallons left. Then you switch over to a different tank to burn from, and you reach up and turn on the transfer. So at this point, we're going to keep an eye on the front tank while that transfer happens. And it should take around three to five minutes or so uh, for that front tank to fill back up. And before it gets full, so we don't overflow, we want to reach back up, turn off the tip tank selector again, and so at this point, now we've transferred about 20 gallons out of the tip tank, so each one has around 10 gallons left. And from here, we just repeat the process again. In addition to this neat overflow effect we can see on the ground, we can also see that in the air. Let's take a look. So here we are flying along, and we're transferring fuel from the tip tanks into the front. And as soon as that front tank becomes full, I'm just gonna help it along here, we can see we'll start venting fuel overboard. So you can see that kind of thin stream of fuel. Now the cool thing is, because this is a gravity feed, the rate of fuel transfer depends on the aircraft's G-loading by a little bit, right? So if I pitch up, it would increase a little, and if I pitch aggressively down for zero G, we see actually that overflow goes away because the transfer stops, and it starts again as I pull out. So the uh, G-loading does affect the transfer rate in this simulation, which is pretty cool. And finally, as if all that fuel wasn't enough, we have an additional fuel tank, the external belly fuel tank. That can be toggled on and off here in the weight and balance pop-up, and you can see as I toggle it off and on, it appears there on the belly of the plane with the filler nozzle up here. This one carries uh, an additional 43 US gallons for another 1.7 hours of flight time. And just like with the other tanks, you can use a scroll wheel or a left click will fill that tank. If we pop on the inside, the selector for this is located down here at the base of the panel. It's this red handle. Horizontal is off, vertical is on. And this uses vacuum bypass pressure to fill the center tank. So uh, this is based on the, uh, the suction gauge will give you an indication of what the fuel transfer rate will be. And that fuel transfer rate does depend on this, and that it is simulated. So uh, this uses extra air from the vacuum pump that extra air, instead of just being vented, goes and pressurizes the fuel tank in order to force fuel from it into the center tank, middle right here. Now, just like with the tip tank, there's no gauge and there's no overfill protection. So if we have the transfer on and the center tank is full, like it is right here, we'll see we're creating another little ecological disaster. Um, so the uh, procedure is very similar to the tip tanks. Uh, more details in the manual, but basically it's the same procedure except where the tip tanks took four or five minutes to transfer, the belly fuel tank's going to take somewhere around nine or ten minutes to kind of fill up that center tank again. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that look at the Beaver's fuel system and the, all of the options available for it, and I will see you on the next video.